welcome you to this video. Just to open the Google browser or any of the browser, open your any of the Gmail account. In this Gmail account, use this Google Apps. These are all the dots, the indicator for Google Apps. Once if you choose this Google Apps, click this nine dots, you will be finding out that drive. This drive, triangular shape drive is written. Click on this. After step, stepping into the Google Drive, look at the new button. Within the new button, just click the more option. So this is the option. Look at here, I'm clicking the new button. After the new button, more option. After the more option, Google Co-Laboratory. In case, if you are using this first time, may be available, may not be available. I just show you how to uninstall and how to reinstall. So how I'm going to do, just look at carefully. Again, go to this connect to more apps. I'm going to click this. First, I'm going to uninstall. So let it not to be into my account also. So co-lab, just type five letter. Automatically, co-laboratory will be the indicator. Choose this. So it is already installed. Look at here. The notification shows already installed. So now double click. Now I am doing reverse process. Uninstall. Only few button click option. Google Cola will be ready. Now let us close this button. Then refresh this drive. Once if I am refreshing, again I am looking at new button. And I am moving to this new button to more. Not available. The Google Go Laboratory is now displacing. So again, I need to click this connect more apps. Now I am in the process of installing. This is the situation for most of you. Now Go Lab, just type Go Laboratory. Then nothing is available, no indicator. Now double click. This is how it looks. Just double click. Find out the Google Go Lab using more apps. Then from that, install button. Just click this button, install. Continue. Just click it. So now, which account you would like to continue this asking? You may be having gallery of Google Gmail account. Choose any one of your Gmail account. This is the Gmail account I'm trying to use. Now it is reached. Done. No more work for all of us. Okay, that's all. So now in one shot, the installation is ready. Why we need to choose Google Lab, Colab? We no need to worry about the machine configuration. We no need to worry about the memory consumption. So always, anywhere, any place, anytime, you can keep continuing your coding practices and also it allows for collaboration. So that is why they have kept a co-laboratory. Collaboratively, we can work into this laboratory exercise. So these are all the, some of the benefits of using CoLab. Now let us step into the CoLab. Now more again, now it is visible. Every time you refresh, anything you try to do major changes into your drive, you need to refresh that drive once again. Now click the whole laboratory button. So it is launching. The first project you are trying to launch. It's called project. Th these are all the minimal steps. Then I shall explain you how to proceed with further. So now it is installed. First step, rename. First project. I am keeping it first project. Now, every day you will be looking at with a cell. This is called cell. When the play button is attached, is called code cell. Now, text cell. When there is no play button, it is text cell. I am moving it up. It is an editor, rich editor, then move. So, first cell usually code editor. Now, I am converting the first cell code editor into text editor. So, now, collab benefits. Collab benefits. Always useful to do Python projects. In the moment I say Python projects, that includes anything, right? Python for statistics, machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, anything. It doesn't matter. So it is useful for any sort of work, video analytics, audio analytics, any sort of work. Number two, it is useful for R programming. Again, with R programming, the same you can do, right? Statistics, machine learning, deep learning, NLP. Is all 
you can do. So again, these are all some of the benefits of this. Then what else we can do with this? The benefits, why? So always the processor load will become, load will become minimal. Why the processor load is minimal? Because it is a cloud product. Most of the floating point operation, flops, most of the floating point operations, numerical operations will be carried out in the cloud. That is the another advantage. The next advantage is it allows to collaborate with people across the flow for the coding. That is another advantage. Next, what is the advantage? You can access a coding notebook anywhere at any time. These are all the benefits. So now, these benefits, what you can do, you can put a larger text. It will become larger text. So just come out of this, then go to the other cell. Just click other part of the cell. It will become your notes. So the same Colab notebook, you can use it as a documentation tool, or teaching tool, or learning notes, and coding. All together, you can do it in a single cell. So that is a single notebook. That is the added advantage of Google Colab. So these are all the benefits. Now, this coding cell, by default, this Colab will allow to work only with Python. But we need to use a special uh, URL or special uh, um, a link for converting this Colab to become our notebook. So that I will demonstrate in yet another video. Now let us look into Python programming, how we can do. So now the first cell is ready. Just to print a simple Python program I'm going to write. I have a lot of Python program. I'll show you that as well. 30, print of A plus B. That's it. This is my simple code, sum of two numbers, right? So now I'm clicking. So it will display the result of A and B. So this is the way we can do Python code. The very first time when you click the play button, it would take a little more time, maybe one minute, two minutes. Now the result has come within one minute, 40. Then subsequent cells, it will speed up the work. So no need to wait this much time. So now I'm creating one more code for the better practice. A is equal to input. There is a function called input function. Now enter your name. I'm just giving, enter your name, input. That's all. This is the command useful for getting the input. Now it asks you, by default, it will convert whatever the input we are giving in terms of string value. Now I'm just entering the name. So just one of the name I can give. John. Just I'm giving John. That's all. It accepts the input. Now I can print the input, another core cell. So now print of A. Because I am receiving the value John in A. So now I'm printing it, job. So now if you want to convert the input into another, some other data type, type conversion method you need to use. For example, enter your age. I'm just typing enter your age. Usually age is represented in terms of integer, int. So now input of int of this, that's it. This is for just annotation, just a display text. So now I'm clicking this, it asks for enter your age. Int, enter your age, input, input, int of, input of, int, that input need to be converted into integer. Now it is correct. Int of, input of, int of, input of, int of, input of, enter your age. So there are so many mistakes I committed. Now something like 34, enter. So the age of John, 34. So now it is ready. So now if you wish to um, ask something different of input, float, enter your weight, enter your weight or body mass in index, enter your BMI, body mass index, it's good. It. Now you can give 4.5. So something like this, you are trying to give 4.5. So that's So you need to go for 
type conversion. Now you can create cells as much as possible. You can give annotation as well, just give here. So input function is useful for, useful for the, useful for the inputs. That's all, it is useful for inputs to the program. It is useful to, useful for getting the input. Getting the inputs to the program. That's all. This is the use of what to say input function. So you can give comment then and there. Now I have applied bold effect. Earlier I have applied larger font. So now I have applied bold effect. Now see this collab is larger font. This I can apply bold effect also. Let us see what it comes. Only bold text has come. So either you can apply bold or uh, larger text, not both at a time. So these are all the way you can keep continuing. Similar way you can do machine learning. You can read the data. You can keep continuing with the collab notebook. It is safer to work with the larger data size so that the processor load will become minimal. Your processor quality will become better when you are using excessively for the coding practices. It's always advisable. Then whenever you are getting stuck up, somewhere your uh, 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 debugging ability is not up to the mark, then you can start sharing with your friends. Say, click the share button. Enter the mail ID to whom you want to share. So these are all the members. For example, this is the name I wanted to share. I'm giving the edit access. So the person can be invited to table or contribute the coding along with me or do anything onto this notebook if I am trusting or if I am, if the person is a collaborator, then I can give, I can give some notification. This is the notebook. We can use it for our project. Something like this, we can type, send, that's all. This along with the notification, this notebook address or URL will be sent to the mailbox. Then naturally, both of us can work with the same collab notebook. We can debug and we can keep sharing the thoughts with each other. Suppose if I'm getting some bugs, I can ask them to change it. Suppose if I'm not able to code for certain logic or certain construct, I can ask them to do. Most of the competitive uh, uh, hackathons, we can use this across the collaborator no, for the progress of that hackathon activities no need to worry about the geographical separation we can use it this we can use this google collab even through google meet we can continue with this google collab we can collaborate we can speed up the work we can take part into any hackathon uh, uh, collaborating anyone across the world. thank you